Hey, how's it going? And today we are going to be taking a look at creating a common user interface. This is the future probably of Unreal Engine. This is also the same menu system that they used in Lyra, which is kind of the state of the art game that you can explore. And this is very, very basic just to get your feet wet and hopefully start you on your journey and ex exploring this. There's a lot to it. So all we're gonna do is if I hit play, this is the menu right here. It's very simple, it just says start and quit. And, <laughs> and we go quit and that's it. And start with print a string. And that's all we're gonna do. And from here you can build out and create even more sophisticated menu systems. So anyway, but you gotta get your mind around the basics first. So anyway, I'll be back in just a minute and we'll build this from scratch. Okay, we're back and to get started with this, I'm just gonna go into the first person template. We're gonna go on blueprints and I'm just gonna call this UI exploration. And we'll just go create. We have to do a couple restarts on here and it just takes a minute. And hopefully I don't get stumped on anything along the way. There are quite a few little steps involved with this, but I'll try to go. I'm trying to make this as simple as I possibly can because I found it kind of confusing in reading up on all this. So that's why I wanted to make this tutorial. So there's two restarts we gotta do before we even get started. And we're gonna get a message saying that the video player doesn't load, but I don't see that as a problem right now. I really don't wanna load this up as a C++ project. So we're gonna go into plugins and we're gonna search for common UI right here. And we gotta restart. And we gotta do a second restart, and we can't do that restart until we do this restart. So it's kind of funky. So here's that message I was talking about. I don't believe we get that if we do C++, but I don't wanna enable C++. But after that, what we do is come into project settings and we search for viewport. Viewport here. And this, if we didn't enable that common UI plugin, all this would be our only option. But because we did, now we have this option. So that's what we want, and we gotta restart it again. So that's kind of a hassle to restarts, but the beauty of this system really is that, I don't know why I get these messages. I, okay, here we go again. There we go. Okay, so here we are, and here we go. So there's a lot of keyboard functionality you could put into the game and put that in through data tables, but we're gonna skip all that. This is just gonna be a mouse, very basic mouse driven menu system. So one of the beauties of this common UI system is that it gives you greater control over customizing your text, your borders and everything else. So it gives you greater control. In fact, this is the system that they used in the Lyra game, which is very advanced and has a beautiful menu system. So that's why it's probably important to get on board with this particular thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to Blueprint Class and we're not gonna create it, we're gonna look in all classes and we just type in style. And right away you see we have border style, button style, text style, and scroll style. We're just gonna do a button style and we'll just call this button style. And we go to configure our button, we'll enable this. And then we'll right click again, go to Blueprint Class. We're gonna search for style again. And this is just gonna be text style. So like I said, I'm keeping this very, very simple. So I'm gonna call this text style. So these are our, to give an example of how you can customize things. So anyway, on the button style, we're just gonna click into this. And then all we're gonna do is, on the details panel, we're just gonna change our hovering pattern. So we're just gonna change this color to kind of pink. And then on hover, we're gonna just change it to bluish and go okay. And then pressed, we're just gonna change it to green. And then on disabled, disabled's the very last one, we're going to change that to kind of a yellow. And that's all we're gonna do as far as our styling for our button states. So we'll just compile and save that. And honestly, we don't even need to deal with this anymore. Now, our textile, we're gonna do something very similar on the details panel here. We have 
all the options, normal options, and I think even more options than we normally have. We can set the font style here and we can change the color. Let's just change it to white. So I'll just go one, one, one. And that's all we're going to do here. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger, 36, the font size. Or let's do something that you can notice. We'll make it bold and italics. Okay, and then we'll compile and save that. And we're done with our style options that are available to us. Now here is the, the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. So we're going to be dealing with something called a common activatable widget. We're going to have two of them. One's going to be a container and then the other one's going to sit inside of that container and we'll have the ability to activate or deactivate it. And so we could add multiple widgets inside of a widget. We're not going to be using canvas panels. We're going to be using a lot of overlays. So this is all about stacking widgets and layering them. If you didn't say stacking, it would be layering them, just like an overlay. It basically gives you overlay functionality to widgets. And then you can sort them, resort them, and do all different kinds of things with them. So you have a lot of flexibility to put many widgets on top of one another. So anyway, the first one we're going to create is it's going to be our container widget. So again, this is standard operating procedure here. We're going to search for common activatable widget. And it's down here on the bottom, common activatable widget. And we go select. Okay, and this one, I'm just, for clarity, this is gonna be our container widget. So it's gonna be the one that houses, we could put multiple widgets in there. I'm just putting one in there for convenience right now. And we can go ahead right now and just hit Control D and make another one of those. And this is just going to be called Main Menu. And this is going to be our widget inside of a widget. So let's go inside of here. We just have a few things to do inside of here. And the first thing is we're getting away from canvas panels and we're going to be using overlays. So we just get an overlay and drag it down here. And I think, and then we got to search for something, and this is really the star of the show that makes all this functionality happen is, it's called Common Activatable Widget, I didn't spell that right, Widget Stack right here. So you can almost think of it as a widget switcher, but it does it by stacks and layers. So you click that and bring that down on the overlay, and then... On its details panel, we can just set it to fill. So it fills the whole thing. And then over here on its graph, we come in here, we have it set as a widget. We can actually looking at that, I can change the name of this so this makes it clearer. This is basically gonna be for our main menu. So we'll call this main menu. So this is gonna hold our main menu widget. It's going to be inside of our container widget. We'll compile and save this. So I'll come over to the graph now. And this is kind of cool. We can just, we're going to create a custom event. And we'll go custom. And we'll just call this push main menu. Basically push the main menu onto the stack. And off of here we can drag this. And then off of here, we hit, we search for what's called push, push widget. And I didn't know that you could do this, but this is pretty nifty. You can just drag this right over here and let go. And that's all we have to do to enable the functionality. So that's going to enable our switcher or, or whatever you call it, our stacker, I guess, not switcher. And then we're, we're done with this one. And now we can go and let's see. So let me show you something real fast. This is going to be our our main menu. And uh, if we double click into it, you'll see if I search for, I'm going to put an overlay in here, I believe. An overlay. Yep. Like that. That's going to be an overlay. I'm going to come back to this, but we'll put an overlay in here for right now. But if I search for a button, we just have this button and that's not the that's not the button that we want using this common UI system we can we have to basically custom create our own buttons 
And that's again ties into customizability of this whole process. So what we'll do, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now is we're gonna go ahead and make our own button. So what we'll do is we right click and go up to Blueprint Class again, and we're gonna search for button. And we want this one called Common Button Base. And we go OK. And we can call this My Button since it's one that we are customizing ourselves. And we're just going to double click into it. And then for this, there's a couple things that we got to do in here as far as creating our own button. But again, we're going to get another overlay and drag that down here on My Button. And it comes in like that. And then on my button, here we can set its minimum width and height. So let's say we want this 270 by 50. We can set that. And here's where we can set our button style that we created right there. So it, it changes the color because that was the normal color that we had chosen. So that's how we that's where our button style comes in. And then we have our overlay. And we're not really getting a fair representation of what we're seeing right now. So we have to switch our from fill screen to custom. And then here we can switch our height and width. What did I say? 270 by 50. So that's basically our button size right there. And we can just leave it set to, to fill. And now we need to bring some text on. So we go to common text and we're just going to drag this onto the overlay right there and we can go ahead and center that and put that in the the middle right there we want a way to be able to see our text as we as we input it and now this text is going to be so i will call this button text and it needs to be a variable so we'll go ahead and compile and save and then we'll just jump over to the graph well, I noticed it switched on me here a little bit. I'm going to compile and save that. And now I'm going to jump over here into the graph. And we're going to use an event pre-construct, which is basically, it won't affect the game. It just allows us to see things in real time while we're designing things. And so what we're going to do here is we need a text variable. So we're going to get, we're going to call this one input text. And this will be whatever we want to appear on our buttons. And we'll set it to a text variable. And this is very important. It needs to be instance editable. And go compile and save. And then we just drag our button over here. Get button. Pull off of here. Oops. Pull off of here. And go set text. Right like that. And then just plug it in like that. And then get our text here get text. And like I said, this will allow us to see what we put in here. So like this one, it has no text in there right now. And I could, I could type in something like uh, start game, just so I have an idea of what it looks like. But here again, we created that style, remember, for our text. So we can set that right here. So there's our start game text. Okay, so compile and save and we lose that as soon as we do that and believe it or not we are we are pretty much on the home stretch here so now all we have to do is go into our main menu this is really it we're we're really almost done so we got to come in we already have our overlay up and what we're going to do is we're going to drag in a vertical box and this is going to house our buttons and we just pop that in there and it's kind of the it's just kind of a small thing right there. I always get confused on this sometimes about the, I can't really set the size of it because it seems like it's being governed by this. So what we're gonna do now is we can search for our button. So I can search for, I think it should be called my button. There it is right there. So let's see what happens when we drag this onto the vertical box. Oh good, it, it, gave us, it gave us a minimum height and width, so it comes in just fine. Now on the button, if I click on the button, I can type in start game, start game there like that. 
and then I can just keep dragging as many buttons as I want, honestly, on to, into the vertical box. And this is, you know, like I said, I can just keep dragging buttons all day, but this is just, I'm trying to keep this simple. Quick, quick game. Okay, so there's our two buttons. Now I know from experience that this is gonna be way too close to the top, and this is where the print string comes out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in here to padding on the top, and let's just bring this way down. So can I do, what happens if I put in 500? Yeah, let's just, let's just leave it right there for right now. And there's lots of ways you can put in spacers, you can do all different kinds of things to make this look nice. I'm just trying to get it out of the way for right now. And believe it or not, we're done. <laughs> this is actually our menu. So now all we have to do is make it appear. Now, I was gonna show you that now that we've got these buttons here, we have the same functionality we would have in any menu system. So like on my button here, if we come down here and go to clicked, we have our functionality here. And here I would just, whatever your game logic is or whatever message you wanna blueprint out, you could send out here. So we could just do a print string and just say in something like, oh, the game has started. The game has started. Okay, and then if we come back on the designer view and we got this button, then we can do the same thing. And you'll notice you have more options here than you have before. You can actually make these buttons have give off sounds and stuff. So anyway, if we go on button base clicked, we click this. And here, this is the beauty of the system, is you have options to all this functionality now where you have this one, if I right click here, actually and go deactivate. Now we have this option to de deactivate widgets, and this actually shuts the widget off. And then you have the ability to activate widgets. So you just have a lot more functionality with this system is, is what it is. Now to make this appear on our game screen, we just have to go, just like we normally probably would do, we just have to do one extra thing, is we come up in here and we're just gonna come off of this event begin right here and drag off and we can go create widget. Now the widget we're wanting to create is that container one. So that's the one we're looking to create is the container because that's the one that's housing our widget. Hosting, you can think of it as hosting our widgets inside of it. And then off of here, we just go add to viewport, right like that. And then we have to push this main menu onto this, into this container widget. So that's one more com command is function is push main menu. There it is right there. And it's gonna go in here and it is our main menu. So that's what we're gonna be pushing in. So that brings up our container widget and this pushes this menu, this widget into activation on that. So let's see if this darn thing works. So we come into first person and hit play and there's our menu button, see? Start game, start should print a string. The game is started. Quit game deactivates the widget. And I want to say it's that simple, but you can see there's a lot of little steps to it. But I just wanted to break this down and make it as simple as possible. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day. And please subscribe if you found this helpful.